Welcome back. In the last video we talked about detection and response and explain what these detection and response mechanisms do. In this video we're going to cover something which is quite related. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, outline the role of the nervous system in detecting and responding to environmental change. So the actual verb itself is outline. And what we have to do is we have to outline the role of the nervous system in detecting and responding to change. So we have to outline the role of the nervous system in detection and response. So what role does it have in detection and response? And outline just means we have to um, list these points that are important and quickly kind of describe you know, what is the role of the nervous system when it comes to detection and response. And I'll go over that in a second. Before I start, I want to go over you know, what is the nervous system and what makes up the nervous system. So here we've got a picture of the nervous system. And you can see two different colors, a blue color and like a reddish color. Obviously, we have the brain as well. So the brain and the spinal cord, which is that red part here, are part of the central nervous system. Brain plus spinal cord. Now these are the parts which do most of our decision making. So these are our thinking and reacting part, thinking and reacting center. I kind of made that up, but I mean just the actual terminology, thinking and reacting center, but that's their purpose, that's what they do. And the rest, so these blue parts, are just our general nerves. So our nervous system, our nerves of our nervous system, and they're usually, you know, the arms, legs, and any other part which is not the spinal cord and the brain belongs to the peripheral nervous system. So we've got these two parts of our nervous system, and they both combine to make our nervous system work properly. So when we're going to talk about nervous system. It's both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. You don't have to remember these names, but I mean, it will always be useful to know what these parts are. I'll explain how they interact and how they help make detection and response happen. So what we have here, we have a couple of different things. First, we have a thermoreceptor. And if you remember, these receptors are part of the things that make our um, detection happen. So I'll learn the role of the nervous system in detecting and response. Thermoreceptors help to detect. And what you can imagine is you have in our blood vessels, we have these body heat particles, and they're just, we can imagine these yellow are our heat particles. And what I drew here is the same as this picture here. So you can see here is our thermoreceptor, and it attaches to blood vessel. So these red and blue things are our blood vessels. And this is actually skin, so this is just above the skin. So you can see it's pinching the skin. And this is the same drawing as this part here, right here. So we have a thermoreceptor, which connects to our blood vessels, and it will actually always, it's like a thermometer, it will read our temperature. So these parts which come in will always be connected to the thermoreceptor just to be able to get a reading. And that's for example, I mean obviously ideal temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius for a body, but let's say that reading now gives them 38 degrees Celsius. So that's 38 degrees, which means that's a not ideal temperature. So what we'll do, the thermoreceptor will send a signal on. So this blue signal is a nerve. Now I'll explain what the nerve is in a second. So we'll go from the thermoreceptor to the hypothalamus. And now when it comes to what is the role of the nervous system, well the thermoreceptor is actually part of the nervous system. This is part of, in this case, the peripheral nervous system, but it's part of the nervous system. So without the thermoreceptors, without the nervous system, we wouldn't be able to detect change. Because here we have detected that change. Now the next part is responding to change. Again, as soon as it's picked up this change, it's going to send a signal through nerves to the hypothalamus. And what nerves are is actually this. This is a neuron. So you can see, you might have seen this one already in year nine or 10. And it'll come again later in HTC as well. But neuron just consists of a dendrite and a cell body and these, these endings. It's not really important, but so that line I drew that, and I will represent new nerves by this blue line in this video. These are just end to end, lots of these neurons. So one here, then one here, and they connect end to end, and they go from place to place. So these nerves are obviously also part of our nervous system, and they help like, relay messages from one place to the other. So nerves are also part of nervous system, in this case the peripheral nervous system, but also the central nervous system, so both parts. And they help actually get messages from one place to the other. 
So you, know, you can imagine what I drew, drew earlier. If it picks up that change, the thermoreceptor, it will send a signal. And that signal will actually arrive. So here it comes. The signal comes from the thermoreceptor. And it will arrive at the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is part of the central nervous system because it's part of the brain. So here that's our brain. It's part of our brain. So it's part of the central nervous system. And it helps. It's the coordinating center. So it's the coordinating or the control center. It helps to decide what to do. Right, so the only job of the thermoreceptor is to pick up the change and then send a signal to the hypothalamus, which is part of our brain, and then that part of the brain will decide what will it do with that signal it gets. This blue line is a nervous system which sends that signal to our hypothalamus, and now it's deciding what will I do, what, what should I do with that new signal, that increase in temperature, a stimulus. And it will send a new signal. So again, part by the neurons, it will send a signal to the glands, also to the blood vessels to dilate, but also to the glands, the sweat glands. And I'll show you the sweat glands and, and what they do. Uh, so again, the signal is now sent from the hypothalamus to the sweat glands to produce sweat. So this is a sweat gland right here, and it's also part of our skin. So just below our skin. And again, you can see this blue line comes, and it's coming from hypothalamus, and it's going right to the sweat gland. So nerves are telling the sweat gland to actually activate and start producing sweat. So once it gets that signal, it's going to start producing sweat. And these blue droplets are the sweat. And they will evaporate and help cool the skin. And thereby bring the temperature back down to 37 degrees Celsius. But what you can imagine is this um, sweat gland is a bit like your television. It's always going to be there, but unless you actually switch it on, unless you give it electricity, it's not going to switch on. It's not going to be activated. So sweat gland by itself won't produce sweat. It will only produce sweat when it's being told by the hypothalamus through this nervous system to be switching to switch on. Uh, so the sweat gland is not part of the nervous system. This is actually part of the endocrine system. So it's not part of the nervous system. Not part of the nervous system. But it won't do anything unless the nervous system tells it to actually switch on. So nervous system is really important. This is the response, right? The sweat gland is the response. And it's really important for it to get that message from the brain or it won't activate. So or the response won't happen. So I'm going to go over all that quickly again in this diagram. So hopefully that should be able to um, make it a bit more easy to understand as well. So we have here, as this is again, we, we just imagined this was 38 degrees Celsius. So it's a bit too high. Our stimulus gets picked up by this here, which is the thermoreceptor. Now, the thermoreceptor has sensed that change, has detected the change. So here is where detection occurs. Detection. And as soon as it detects that change, it will send that signal through that blue line, which is a nervous system, or the nerves. These are the nerves. It will send that to the hypothalamus, which is this part here. The red dot was the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. And hypothalamus is where is our control center. So it will decide what to do with that signal, control center. And it's decided it will send a response, a signal to the glands to respond because it wants to bring it back down to 37 degrees Celsius. So it will send that signal to via nerves again to our sweat gland. See, so this your nerves here. And this is our sweat gland right here, sweat gland. And again, this grayish, you know, this grayish or pinkish thing is our skin. And it's been activated because of the signal from the nerves has been activated, so it's gonna produce sweat. So you can imagine sweat droplets come. And when they evaporate, that means when they're gonna have evaporative cooling, so we're gonna have the skin cool. And when this all cools, everything below will also cool, so these Sweat, uh, these heat particles, which were 38 degrees beforehand, will cool because of the sweat, and then they are 37 degrees. All right, so they're back to normal. So this whole thing has helped us to bring it back to normal, and the sweat and the sweat gland, this was the response. So it's asking the dot point itself is outline the role of the nervous system in detecting and responding to environmental change. Well, the Thermoreceptors are part of the nervous system, so we can't detect change without the uh, thermoreceptors. 
And even though sweat glands are not part of the nervous system, without the nervous system, we wouldn't be able to get the message to the brain and from the brain to the sweat glands. So without the actual nervous system, response wouldn't happen either. So both response and detection are completely relying on, on the nervous system. So without the nervous system, we wouldn't have homeostasis that, that occurs. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.